A small isopod scurries along the ocean floor collecting food. It can see above it there are no predators, so its scavenging mission can continue without danger. There's nothing below it except the sand of the seabed, or so it seems. Suddenly, the sandy floor seems to explode, and a monstrosity bursts forth. A long, snaky, worm-like creature with extended antennae and a segmented body extends from its burrow and lightning fast grabs the isopod in its jaws. Just as fast, the predator and prey sink back into the sand never to be seen again, at least until the hunter is hungry again. Something out of a horror movie? Not quite. It was the beginning of 2021 when Ludwig Lomark, a scientist from National Taiwan University, announced that he and his fellow geoscientists had made a disturbing discovery in the seabeds. It was a creature that was one of the ocean's deadliest predators 20 million years ago. But it wasn't an ancient whale or a shark, or a giant squid that wrapped unsuspecting prey up in its tentacles. It was a worm, but definitely not like the earthworms you see in your garden. We don't know as much about these ancient forms of life as we'd like, because fossils usually require one thing to be left behind – bones. And that makes studying invertebrates tricky. But this mysterious worm, named Panychnus, had a few factors that made it different from most invertebrates. For one, it had an exoskeleton that was more likely to be left behind in surviving fossils. Second, it had distinctive burrows that were easy to identify in the rock that was preserved. Finally, it was big. Really big. So how big can a worm get? Ludwig Lomark and his team believe Panychnus could have grown to be as large as six feet long or longer, making them a threat not just to the unfortunate fish or isopods that wandered by, but to larger prey, including humans if they happened to be around. However, these creatures weren't easy to find. They were likely masters of disguise and functioned less as apex predators on the hunt than as living death traps waiting to be triggered. People have compared them to a pair of iconic monsters from science fiction, the Sarlacc Pit from Star Wars and Sandworms from Dune both of whom lay in wait in the sand until their prey come into range. But Panychnus might be more vicious than either of them. The scientists carefully reconstructed the creature's burrow from samples of rock found, and nearly complete fossils were found inside. The creature would lurk inside, completely concealed except for one part of its body, its long antennae, that it used as feelers. These sensors would alert the creature when an unfortunate sea creature was passing in range, and like a loaded spring, it would burst out of its burrow. This is similar to the trap system used by an iconic plant, the Venus flytrap, which snaps shut when it senses movement. But unlike the hungry plant, Panychnus had one advantage. It could fight, and when it got prey in its jaws, it didn't back down. When Panychnus latched onto his prey, the fight was just beginning. The monster worm would recede back into its burrow, but the creature grabbed would still be alive. There would often be a pitched battle under the sand as the creature desperately tried to escape, and the worm clamped down tighter to finish it off. This often led to distinctive markings around the burrow from the disturbances, but it was likely that most, if not all, the battles ended with a Panychnus with a full belly. But what would happen if the creature bit off more than it could chew? While we don't have many fossils to indicate this, Panychnus seems to be built in a way that would allow it to be very flexible. This means that it wouldn't be vulnerable to larger prey snapping it in two, and it had no bones to break. If it was in a pitched battle that it was in danger of losing, the odds are it would simply release its powerful jaws and let the prey swim or scuttle away, if it was in any shape to do that after the initial bite. Live and attack another day. There's bound to be something swimming by soon. But what if Panychnus had to go after Earth's dominant life form today? At six feet, Panychnus is longer than many humans. It could definitely pose a threat to us if it existed today. There's just one problem for the monster worm. What would it do with us? While it may be close to us in length, it's definitely not in overall size and definitely wouldn't be able to eat us. But that doesn't mean encountering them would be a pleasant experience. Humans walking along the seabed could definitely trigger its antennae, and between the speed of its attack and its powerful bite, they could definitely cause some serious damage. The effect might be similar to the mantis shrimp, another seabed predator that punches above its weight class. This crustacean kills by delivering a devastating high-speed punch with its leg. The impact is so powerful, the creature gained its nickname the Toe Splitter, with many of its victims needing surgery. The good news is Panychnus is extinct and humans aren't likely to encounter it, right? Well, yes and no. We only have a few fossils of this ancient sea worm and some fossilized burrows. So how did Dr. Ludwig Lomark and his team know so much about it and how it lived and hunted? It's because there is a living creature today that might be a direct descendant, and while it might be smaller, it's no less dangerous and terrifying. Aeonis aphroditois is a benthic bristle worm that lives in warm ocean waters, but it's much more known by its more colorful name, the Bobbit worm. Named after the famous case of Lorena Bobbitt, who hacked off her husband's abusive member in 1993. 
What's the connection between this worm and that case? Well, the worm's vicious snapping motion made people think it could take off members in a hurry. Could that happen? Probably not, but no one's looking to find out. Typically, living among coral reefs, this modern worm can be as small as 4 inches, but the biggest and most well-fed specimens can grow to as much as 10 feet. Despite this long body, it's still very thin, only an inch wide at most. With no eyes, it hunts entirely using its antenna as feelers, and has a similar hard exoskeleton as the ancient version. While it's not known if Panichnus had similar features, this creature has retractable mandibles that are strong enough to snap prey clean in half. And just like its ancestor, it's a master of disguise. The bobbit worm became famous in 2013 when an aquarium staff noticed something disturbing in their fish tank. The collection of corals seemed to be getting smaller and smaller, almost like something had been eating it. After observing the tank carefully for a while, they saw something moving in there, something that shouldn't be there. The bobbit worm had likely hitched a ride back when it was tiny and had been growing fat on the tank for years. By the time the staff had finally noticed it, the creature had grown to over 4 feet in length and was going to keep growing as long as it had things to eat in the tank. But one detail indicated just how much of an invasive threat those worms could be. The long creature, covered in small spiked tentacles, seemed to move as one, but before the surveillance video that had discovered it started, its tail had been cut off. And before the footage of the worm ended, the tail seemed to slither away independently, indicating that each segment of the worm could potentially become its own creature. And when the worm was as hungry and as deadly a predator as this one, that could be a major problem for any bodies of water it swims in, both small fish tanks and as large as the sea. But some scientists worry that the creature might have another deadly weapon in its arsenal. When the bobbit worm became world famous in 2013, everyone wanted to study the 4-4 creature they nicknamed Barry. A newspaper quickly claimed that the worm likely had a devastating venom in its bristles, possibly causing permanent numbness and paralysis in humans who touched it. But scientists studying Barry raised doubts. The theory about the venom came from assessing another family of worms called fireworms that have bristles capable of causing severe skin irritation. However, the bobbit worms seem to be something very different, despite some physical similarity to fireworms, and possibly far more ancient. The bobbit worm can cause a lot of havoc in fish tanks, but it's far more dangerous to the creatures it encounters in the wild. It has a wide range, living in sandy and muddy areas near coral reefs, but it's notoriously hard to detect due to its ability to blend into its surroundings and its habit of burrowing into the ground. It can live deep under the water, as deep as 285 feet. And while most of its prey never see it coming, a few fish have developed a unique defense mechanism. A group of fish swim over the seabed. Suddenly, the worm strikes, grabbing one of them. But the other fish don't swim away and leave their schoolmate to its fate. Instead, they mob the worm, shooting the worm and its burrow with jets of water from their mouth, hoping to disorient it and make it let the other fish go. Does it work? Not always, but it gives them a fighting chance and proves that in nature, few creatures are without some kind of defense. But has this nightmare worm really been stalking the seas for 20 million years? It's too early to tell if Aeonis Aphrodite and Panaeknis are the same creature, but they're likely closely related. A look at the bobbit worm's reproductive cycle indicates they can live 3 to 5 years, but their eggs have a harder go of it, often being eaten by other animals before hatching, which may be the only time the nightmare worm is prey rather than predator. How big would Panaeknis grow? What were the biggest animals it hunted in ancient times? The life cycle of its modern relative may provide some clues, but for now, the ancient nightmare worm found in the seas off Taiwan is keeping many of its secrets locked up in the past, and most people are probably happy they won't be encountering it anytime soon. For more on nature's deadliest small predators, check out Murder Hornet Sting. This is how painful it is. Or watch most venomous animals in the world you should watch out for, for some of the animal kingdom's secret killers.